Hi. In this tutorial, what I want to do is extend what we've learned in tutorial one about how we integrate terms of the form ax to the power n with respect to x. Remember I showed you that this was the same as ax to the power n plus 1 over n plus 1. We simply just added 1 to the power and divided by the new power. And don't forget that constant of integration plus c. Now I say we're going to extend this because sometimes you're going to find you're going to get terms like this one, 4 over x squared to integrate, or it could be any number, any constant on the top divided by x to a particular power, like x cubed, x to the power 5 and so on. And in this example what I'm going to show you is how we can do much the same kind of thing when you've got some kind of root function in the denominator and also when you've got a number in the denominator as well. We've got number 4 here. Okay so let's start with number 1 then, the integral of 4 over x squared with respect to x. Well, we need to get it into this format up here, ax to the power n then. So what we do is we can see this, or we're going to rearrange it anyway, we see this as 4 times 1 over x squared with respect to x. Now 1 over x squared we can pick up on the basic indices rule, okay? You should know that 1 over x to the power n is identical to x to the power minus n. So in this example we've got n being the 2. So it's going to be the same as x to the minus 2. So we can write this then as equal to the integral of 4 times x to the minus 2. I'll drop the time sign though. Okay, we'll just write 4x to the minus 2 and we're integrating that with respect to x. So you can see that we've got this now in this format. a is the 4 and n is the power minus 2. So according to this rule up here all we need to do is add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So we get 4, our a value. Now we just add 1 to the power of minus 2. So minus 2 add 1 is minus 1. Divide by the new power, the minus 1 and don't forget the constant of integration which I'm going to call plus c. Now we need to clean this up and we've got 4 divided by minus 1 which is basically negative 4. So we'll write that. Make sure you put your minus out the front here. Minus 4 then multiplied by x to the minus 1. Let's just put times x to the minus 1 though plus c. What is x to the minus 1? Well we can come back to this rule up here. x to the minus 1, if n here is a 1, we've got x to the minus 1, becomes 1 over x to the power 1. Or just simply 1 over x. So I can write this then as minus 4 multiplied by 1 over x. And then plus c. And we can think of this minus 4 as minus 4 over a 1 if you like, but we're multiplying fractions here and in doing that we just do minus 4 times 1 which is minus 4 and then we've got a 1 underneath this 4, 1 times x is just x, so we get minus 4 over x and then plus that constant of integration plus c. Now I've done quite a lot of steps through here and I'm sure with practice you'll find that you won't have to write half as many stages as I've done here. But obviously I've just done these stages so you can see the breakdown of the problem. Okay, so hopefully that will give you some idea of how you handle terms like this. Now in the next example I'm introducing roots and I'm also introducing a number in the denominator, this time a 4 in the denominator. So let's just show you how we handle ones like this then. Again we've got to get this to the form ax to the power n. So we can think of this uh, as 5 quarters, so we'll just write that as 5 quarters, multiplied by 1 over the cube root of x squared. Now what is the cube root of x squared? We need to think of that as 
a power of x. We can turn to this rule here, that if you have the nth root of x to the power m, it is identical to x to the power m over n. And in this example, the n is 3, we're taking the cube root, of x squared, so m is 2. So we end up with x to the power 2 thirds. So we can say that this is 1 over x to the power 2 thirds. Don't forget the integral sign and the dx on the n. We're integrating with respect to x. Now, we still have to get this into the form ax to the power n, but we have a reciprocal function here, 1 over x to the power 2 thirds. So we use this rule here. n is 2 thirds, so we can write it as x to the power minus 2 thirds. And if we drop the time sign, we now have the integral of 5 over 4, 5 quarters times x to the power minus 2 thirds. And then we integrate that with respect to x. Now I just want to draw your attention to the fact that we don't bring that 4 up. Okay, We don't bring that 4 up as a negative power. We don't think of this as 4 times x to the minus 2 thirds. Okay? The 4 stays down the bottom here in the denominator. Okay, so our a value up here is 5 quarters. Our n is minus 2 thirds. So we can integrate it. We've got it in the right format. So if we do that, we've got 5 quarters. Then we take our x term, we add 1 to the power, so minus 2 thirds add 1 is 1 third. We divide by the new power, so we've got one third down there. I'm going to write that in brackets because it looks like four and a third, but it's meant to be four times one third. And don't forget that constant of integration plus c. Now we need to tidy this up, and what we can do is times top and bottom by the three here. Timesing top and bottom by three is like timesing by one, so it won't alter the value but just change the appearance. So we end up with this equaling 5 times 3, which is 15. Then we have x to the power third, all divided by 4. And then we have the constant of integration plus c. Now I could leave it like this, it's up to you. But we've got x to the power third, and I'm going to take this opportunity of just writing it back with a root in it. Only this time, We've got n is 3, so we're talking about the cube root of x to the power 1, or just simply the cube root of x. So I can write this then as equals 15 over 4 times the cube root of x, and then plus c. I don't have to think of this as 15 quarters. I could, by the way, just simply write 15 times the cube root of x, and put the 4 somewhere in the middle there. Okay? It's up to you. It doesn't matter. And then we've got plus c. And again, I've taken lots of uh, stages in working this out. But again, with practice, you should find that you could skip one or two of these stages and get to your answer. Okay, well I hope that's given you some idea of how then we can handle terms like this in an integral. And uh, that brings us now then to the end of this particular tutorial.